Hey guys, so you know how sometimes somebody puts like a motivational link to a YouTube video on their Facebook page? I decided, or they, 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 they snap a picture of something they've read in a book, right? Well, most people don't read these days as much and they like videos. So I've decided to read an excerpt from a book that I am loving right now. And I wanted to give you a little background on my story, tiny bit. Um, where I am at in life right now is crazy compared to where I was six years ago. I got a divorce, actually, so it's been more than six years, but who's keeping track of my divorce date? Not me. Um, anyway, so I got into real estate six years ago, which is where that comes from. So it's more like seven years since my divorce. But the point of it is, is that I am, where I am at today and the person that I am today is something I never would have expected um, out of myself. And it's just crazy how me leaving my ex and basically like just leaving with zero. Like I, I, I got 20 grand and I didn't want alimony or anything and I left and I didn't have a job because we owned a small gas station, long story. Um, I was determined that I didn't really wanna work for anyone else ever again, but I didn't know if that was gonna be a possibility. And I, ended up getting crazy, like fast forwarding, I ended up getting crazy anxiety and crazy emotions from leaving because you just don't have that person that you had for 10 years that you could, you know, talk to when things were rough or whatever and also support in every way, be it emotionally, mentally, physically, and financially. <clears throat> so I went through a lot of emotions even though I was the one who chose to leave. I would wake up constantly with anxiety and panic. Um, panic and anxiety would last all day, but I would wake up crying, calling my dad, um, and finally decided to come back to Utah to work out my emotions. And when I did, I told my dad that I didn't want to get a job here because I didn't know where I wanted to be or what I wanted to do and if I wanted to stay here. So I thought if I got a job here, I would get stuck and then I would end up being in Utah. And so I was lucky because he decided, like, he was like, stay with me. I'll help you. All I had was a car payment and a cell phone bill. So it was kind of simple. And um, he was like, just figure it out and, and we'll work it out. So I did. And it was really hard being 36 years old. And, uh, you know, that's when I got divorced. Um, being 36 years old, having taken care of yourself for so many years, and then ending up, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to, have gotten a divorce and have probably moved in with your parents at some point during that divorce. Um, but it was it's hard and it's a little... Um, like uncomfortable, right? And disheartening to be 36 and live with my dad and not have a job because I was emotionally unstable and did not know what I wanted to do. So <clears throat> it took me about a year to work through all my emotions and to figure out what I wanted. And I ended up falling back in love with Utah again. And I decided to get into real estate because I had always wanted to my entire life. I have loved homes. First, it was going to be an interior designer. And I let limiting beliefs stop me from that because a teacher had told me that I would only make probably 25000 a year. And I allowed that to sink in my head and I believed that. And I should have been different <clears throat> and been more confident and been like, uh, yeah, no, not me. I'll make more than that. But I had no clue and I was young. So basically, I had no one to stop me. I had no one to tell me what I could or couldn't do at this point. And I was like, I've wanted to go into real estate for so long and I have nobody to talk to about it as in like, you know, who could put, you know, their thumb on me and say, no, it's probably not a good idea or whatever. It was my life and I got to make what I wanted of it. So I got into real estate and I always tell everybody that it saved my life and it did. And within three months, I had a good amount of money in my bank account. I went literally from zero dollars or I'm sorry, probably one dollar because that's what you have to have to keep your savings at America First, which I love. America First, to their horn. Um, but I went from that to a good amount of money in my bank account at my third or fourth month mark. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I can move out. And so my point is, is that where I am at now is just crazy because of how I've believed in myself. Like my confidence level changed so much as I progressed and realized what I was capable of, what I was capable of by myself without anyone putting me down, bringing me down and telling me what to do or what I shouldn't do. More input than anything because I still, a lot of times would still do what I wanted. But 
you know, when people put you down or bring you down, it, it, it can stick a little bit. So today I wanted to just really quick, and I know this is longer, but it is what it is. If you want to watch it, awesome. If you don't, it's okay. I was going to give you an excerpt from a book that I started reading, and I'm not the biggest self-help book reader, but I was recommended this book by somebody that is so smart and business-oriented, and I really respect. His name is Joe Gilmore, um, and it is called Unforgiven The Unforgiving Race to Greatness, Winning by Tim Grover. I'm telling you guys, I love this book. It has made me cry. It has brought so many emotions out of me, so I highly recommend that you read it. But I'm going to read an excerpt from here that I was hoping would like just motivate some of you because sometimes we don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe we can do the things or the ideas that we have, but you don't know if you don't take the damn risk, if you don't set out to do it and just go for it and stop getting in your head. Stop listening to what people tell you around you. If they're giving you any negative energy, who gives a shit? You go for it and you try. And if you felt that is part of being an entrepreneur, that is part of life, that is part of business, and that is a huge part of learning. Failing teaches you so much. So fail forward, okay? So here's the excerpt. Without further ado, I hope you've enjoyed my little story in a nutshell. Um, okay. Ultimately, Confidence is about taking chances and never doubting the outcome. You can't win if you can't gamble on yourself. And you can't gamble if you don't believe you can win. Winning requires you set unrealistic goals and expect to achieve them. That doesn't mean chasing unattainable dreams. It means making smart, educated, and confident decisions about what you're capable of achieving. When you're making those decisions and enjoying the results, I lost my spot, life is so short, it feels as if, you'll, as if you'll never have enough time to enjoy your wins and create new ones. But when you're stuck in one place, scared to try something new and feeling trapped in a life that you don't really want, every day is endless. And the regret lasts forever. And I know this is just me right now. I know we can all relate to that part because I can relate to that fully. And I know we all have those regrets that we have. The life goes on and we're, we all should all be happy with what we learned from that. Um, getting back into it, taking chances is about embracing the darkness of the unknown. It's about facing reality and fear and uncertainty because wherever you're going, you're going alone. Every hazy step will be uneven, unstable, unpromised. But as you continue to take those steps, as you get closer to winning, you can see light in the darkness and reality through the haze until that crazy gamble starts to look like a real possibility, even when you're the only one who can see it. So that just really set me on fire today. I hope that this helps you and motivates you and any of the things that you've wanted to do, maybe it's writing a book, um, you know, starting a new business, coming up with some idea that you wanted to create that you just didn't know exactly what to do. Guess what? There's so many people who don't know what to do. Go buy a book about it. Google about it. Find somebody. Hire the right person. And if you feel like that's hard to do because you don't have the money, figure out how to get the money because if you can make it happen, it'll be worth your while. That's what I have to say. Make it happen. You guys can do this. I hope this motivated you today. I'll talk to you soon.